Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, December the 7th, 2013. I don't know why I say that all the time, but I do it as a courtesy. I do it as a courtesy, so I don't have to, um, to post the date in the description of the show once it's online. Hello there. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, uh, James P. Madonna, and I will now formally pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor and the very founder... Hold on for a second. The very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. I'm going to pipe him aboard with my bosun's whistle. The, the furnace was dead silent right until I was ready to go on the air. I'm telling you, old Beezlebub likes to intercept the real hard-hitting truth that we deliver, that only we deliver, because even MSNBC, let's face it, they have sponsors. They can't, you know, they can't mudsling too much, you know, they, they, they can't make too many waves. So they're only gonna give you so much. The worst a source of news of course, is the major network media and the local newspapers. I hate them. They're a bunch of pansies. They, they don't give you anywheres near the kind of news that you get on the internet. Nope. And that's why I hate using them. But what can you do? Because if you print, if you print the news from the internet, the damn ink costs more money than the printer. <laughs> and it becomes expensive. So we have to improvise, you know, we have to interject what we really know around local news articles. Yeah. Anyway. Arr, welcome aboard. Uh, our progressive liberal starship, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling uh, this week, sir? Not too well because I was not able to enjoy my tea today. Yeah, you were kind of interrupted. Kind of rushed and interrupted and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, I got up not feeling too well myself. Uh, due to climate change, thank you oil companies and greedy people that that tear down the rainforest. Uh, I, um, my allergies have been out of control. Normally I only uh, experience hay fever, hay fever, <laughs> in June. But not in the past few years. It's just <sighs> popping in pills. Well, I have a very short monologue, but it's a good one. So I'll get it over with. Uh, well, the, um, the very bloated, um, obese oh conservative Republican that got reelected in the state of New Jersey, Chris, Crisco, Krispy Kreme, Christie, I, I still c cannot believe how he defeated Barbara Bono in a landslide because she kicked his ass in the two debates. Believe me, she did a good job. Great job. I don't know how she did it, but it, 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 the only there's only two answers to how he got reelected. Either the election was rigged, which I think G.W. Bush might have, might have done in Florida with his brother Jebi, Jebi Bush, uh, or the people are so stupid and so deceived in New Jersey that they they felt that that if they don't elect Chris Christie that um, some huge catastrophe was going to befall them. Now, I think that's how uh, um, Republicans usually get votes is they use fear. That's what uh, uh, G.W. Uh, Bush and Cheney did with the 911. They made him a hero. They use fear. What would happen to the United States? 
if you don't... We're going to get hit again? If you don't re-elect the strong Republican G.W. Bush and... G Mission accomplished! Yes, they're, you know, they, they deal with that patriotic flag-waving, strong military attack, invade, blah, 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 blah. You know, and um, if you don't re-elect us conservatives and you elect the, the, uh, the weak, well, they make them out to be weak, the so-called weak Democrat, oh, you're not going to be safe in America. <coughs> you know, remember Reagan used to say peace through strength all the time? Well, first he went, well, well, you know, I don't recall. <laughs> Trust, but verify. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Chris Christie um, is stopping the Democrats from um, uh, carrying on the, uh, the valuable, in my opinion, uh, green alternative energy product uh, mm. of wind generators. Chris Christie said no to wind generators. So... I, I googled it and uh, it brought me to a very annoying conservative internet news page and the conservatives feel that uh, wind generators are not worth it, they cost too much. Oh, but, but spending multiple millions if not billions on, of dollars uh, <clears throat> in the military on planes that were never used just sitting there collecting dust. Oh, or subsidies that, to oil companies. Or subsidies to oil companies, uh, welfare for the rich. Oh, that's not, uh, that doesn't cost too much. But wind generators cost too much. Now, <coughs> speaking of windmills, <coughs> I saw something Relative. the other day, I don't know if it was propaganda or what, <coughs> but it, it involved people getting mace. Excuse me? By something. Something is getting people sick. Where? And on the picture, in the background, yeah. was a window. Oh, really? Well, I've been reading... I know <coughs> that the windmills make noise. Well, and no. they kill birds. And they're eyesores. Oh, yeah, because, because they're kind of loud. Well, nobody wants them in their backyard, I mean. Well, Although you know, you can, you can you can buy a, a smaller version. You well, you know, uh, you know, the birds don't have to fly into them, you know. But they do. What's they their fly into jet engines? That's their problem. You go the other way. You fly the other way. You don't fly into them. Turn hey, if a kid if a kid rides a skateboard into oncoming traffic, he's dead, and he gets squashed. Are you going to blame the motorist? Hell no. He's not. Hey, he's not. In that case, he's not a pedestrian. An innocent pedestrian. Same thing with the birds. I know birds are much smarter than people make them out to be. They always use the word bird brain, uh, you know, referring yeah, yeah, yeah. to a stupid person. But animals are not really that stupid. They have instincts and... Uh, yeah, well, well, the point of it is the windmills are not the proper apparatus for individual homes. No, they're too big. That's solar. Well, okay. yeah, that's so true. Um, windmills are good for uh, to be put in um, non-residential open land yes. areas. Like, for instance, if you drive down to Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh. on the marina uh, facing the ocean, of course, they have the gigantic wind generators. Uh. Or if you happen to be in, let's say, Rocky Mountains in Colorado, or you happen to be on the in a, on the plains of America, where there's no one for miles, yeah. But actually, the generators are there. They work best when nothing is obstructing the wind. Put them there. Face them towards the ocean. You have a constant ocean breeze. Breeze anyway. Face them towards the ocean. Put one on the top of a skyscraper, for God's sakes, which they don't do. Yeah, well, to run the skyscraper. To run the skyscraper, the, individual skyscraper. the new uh, uh, One World Trade Center, Many the, the obelisk do. they just built in New York. Of course, they got to have the the fancy the tallest building in North America. They have to have a four hundred a four hundred some on foot spire with LED lights around it, but they can't put a windmill up there. And just to to promote alternative energy, mm -hmm. ah, they can't do that. No, people will they think they don't want to do that because of the oil company. 
Okay. Screw the oil companies. This is, this is the problem. People are afraid to say no in America. Uh, or maybe they don't want New York to look like when the Dutch first acquired New York. You know, it'll be the world's largest windmill. <laughs> it was on top of the, the Freedom Tower. But uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, uh, yeah, the Democrats, of course, are all for green green energy, the green movement, alternative energy, and the Republicans are always saying, no, it costs too much, but then again, they turn around and they give millions or billions or trillions or whatever to people that don't need it or projects that don't need the funding, like a weapon that they don't use. And like an Exxon Mobil. Right. Well, they're, they're, they're hypocrites. I mean, they're the biggest, they're the hippiest they're crits. Horrors. They're whores. They're corporate whores, yeah. Why don't we call a bribe a bribe? A campaign contribution is a bribe. It's a glorified mega bribe. Okay, a bribe. It's like because a... Because it opens the door for the lobbyist to come in and yeah. see the politician and say, hey, I want this law. And I'll even write it for you with Alec. Don't they... And then you put it in through your name, okay? Don't they, uh... Don't they glorify a prostitute sometimes by calling the woman a, uh, a gold digger that marries for money or dates for, for money and um, status? I mean, you know, you can call it any, by any name you want. Uh, uh, Wall Street bailout, subsidies, it's still corporate welfare. And, uh, hey, I just thought, you know, the last time we had a, an independent involved in the presidential debates was Ross Perot. Ross Perot and... and um, wasn't he the last who would be invited? I'm trying to think about 1980. I know you had... Uh, uh, oh, what the hell was his name? Barry Commoner. Uh, Ed Clark, I he, believe. He was such a commoner, I don't even remember him. Exactly. Hold exactly. on, hold on, man. The levity bells. And, believe it or not, you had someone called William J. Eisenman. That's right. That's was right. Was that, I believe, was that with John, uh, John, what the hell was that? Was that election with him? Every presidential election, William J. Eisenman is, is, is running. Well, he ain't going to be in the next one. Yeah, because you know nobody, why? Ca nobody cares about the real hard-hitting truth. That's correct. That's just like correct. just like nobody cares to educate their mind of the real hard hitting truth because most people uh, continue to subscribe to newsletters of lies, meaning Republican newsletters, and they continue to believe Republican conservative lies, as in the uh, the red state redneck teabaggers out there, because they 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 follow their religious cult. Uh, I think um, Frank Zappa, the late great Frank Zappa, said it best. The difference between a religion and a cult is the amount of real estate that is owned. That was one of his <laughs> one of his great one-liners. And guess what? They don't pay taxes on that real estate. But they love to stick their Pinocchio nose into politics. And your bedroom. And your bedroom. Speaking of uh, uh, volunteering unwanted comments. I had a, um, a um, sort of a mysterious, abrupt right-wing uh, troll on the internet on Facebook, a right-wing flamer. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he came from, but he, he came and he left after I tore his ass off. Mm -hmm. Well, I posted um, a couple of banners, uh, progressive liberal oriented banners on one of uh, our Facebook groups. Uh, this was... This is the fun group that I created just so I can escape all the drama and aggravation. Mm -hmm. It's called, uh, This Group is About Nothing, nothing. which That's is right. named after the famous Seinfeld episode, uh, the show about nothing, which was the last show of Seinfeld before they stopped the series. So anyway, I post a couple uh, right-wing uh, liberal banners. And lo and behold, this, this character is jabroni by the name of uh, Jason Bayer mm. of, um, of Jacksonville, Florida, originally from Detroit, Michigan. Oh, boy. 
he has his profile photo is somebody in the dark with a big black hat and a black cape. Sounds like me. Sounds like you. So right away he says, he starts cursing. He says, how the fuck did I end up in a group with all these uh, fucking lazy liberals? Oh. So I saw the word lazy and my blood pressure went through the roof. Mm. And that's when I told him off. And his answer was, uh, oh, come on, cry me a river. There's plenty of jobs out there. Now, when somebody says, come on, ah, cry me a river, that means they don't have any compassion. <laughs> That's what that tells me. Cry me a river is like saying, oh, you, you're playing the world's smallest violin, which means no compassion. No humanity. No humanity. And he, there's plenty of jobs out there. This is what these teabaggers that are not in high income tax brackets, by the way. Well, this they, is what they say. Ah, get a job, you lazy bum. They also bum. say that the people on the 49 point uh, whatever million people on food stamps don't need them. Oh, don't yeah, because oh, because people are so rich with food stamps and a Medicaid card and, 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 and welfare. Oh, they're, they're living high, high, in, a hog, high in a hog. Yeah. You know, the rich are jealous of the poor, you know. I mean, the Bible makes that clear. Well, they're, they they really have an obsession with the yes, poor. Yes, they do. They have the poor in their sights. They believe the poor get something for nothing. They they disdain their responsibility. That's what Chris for the Christie poor. said when he first got elected. I'm going to stop the people that have been getting something for nothing. I'm going to put a stop to. You know what something for nothing is? You fat piece of crap it's a few crumbs that's what the Republicans are referring to when exactly. they talk exactly. about the poor getting something for nothing we go back to my my view of the world uh, why is it that the uh, the right wing can't see social programs as a way of lifting the poor up so they're not poor anymore so they don't need social programs. And, and they do one more thing. They put money back into the economy. They well, more of course, spending, they more are spending. Better, they, are, they are more important to the economy. than yeah. Why do you think Reagan, and whenever there's the uh, tax cuts, uh, why do you think they always uh, uh, in, give the tax cuts to the rich and move the burden more onto the middle class and the poor? Happened 30 years ago. There's I, more of us. I think we have all this conservative propaganda and the idiots. Friedmanite that, propaganda. Right, right. Friedmanite and and the um, named after Milton Friedman, the demon Friedman, just like the demon Ayn Rand. Uh -huh. uh, I think this propaganda uh, perpetuates and and is winning out be simply because the politicians are paid off to spread this propaganda and the uh, the evil corporate CEOs are behind it because I believe they send out the lobbyists to Washington and they get, uh, dish out the bribes. So uh, do you blame the CEO? Do you blame the politician for taking the bribe? Do you blame the both of them? Uh, what All do you of them. think? Both of them, right? The whole system is corrupt. The two-party system requires lots of money. A poor schlub who is brilliant and a genius and, 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 and a uh, progressive and deserves to be president, could they never stand a chance. A person like that never stands a chance because the media will never give that person face time. Because the person... Unless they pay for it. Unless they pay for it. And where do they get the money? Yeah. From the big boy. And how, did, how does a, a, a poor genius independent get on the ballot and, and get enough votes? He's got to be known. If nobody knows him or her, they'll never get on the ballot. But how do you how do you get known in the United States? Mm. You got to be it's a big question. You got to be out there, right? It's a good question. How do you be out there? Get out there. How? Why? How? how? Like I say with music and movies and things. There has to be some way of a warehouse type situation where everything is right at your fingertips.
and they don't have. And to, you can go there, and you don't have to pay big bucks. Exactly. For the public to see what you got. Yeah. And the public can decide. Exactly. And if you happen to, and they can to, break and make some, and make or break somebody. And you if know? you ha yeah. and 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 the public, I'm talking about the ones that are not brain cell deficient, <laughs> like teabaggers. If the public, the public can uh, see quality and they can see something meaningful, you know, uh, they'll gravitate towards uh, talent and, and, and intellect and uh, if somebody's sticking to the truth and I'm talking about normal educated consumers. I'm not talking about the ones who buy from Cy Sims. Uh, that's the second time, second week in a row you plug that guy. <laughs> I don't plug any retailer. Uh, that's another talk show. But anyway, the educated consumer, man. The person should be able to to show people what he has he or she has to offer uh -huh. without spending money uh -huh. now know? for instance we we are going to do we are going to read something about the pope but he's getting all kinds of flack now from CNBC Kudlow and Kramer and all the other yeah because because dumbasses. because because he speak he speaketh the truth finally Finally, finally, a, a he, pope. he speaketh. He speaketh something from the Bible. Oh wow! You know, you know, you're right about that. Yeah, about the rich giving to and helping the poor. Yeah, and stop helping and giving to the rich. Yeah, it's, I think he's the first pope. And in, that capitalism in, is a problem. I, isn't he the first pope in history to hit a raw nerve like this? Well, theoretically. Well, Theoretically, Pope. they say that the other popes were interested in the poor, but I don't believe it. I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, but what about... What this guy sneaks out at night public to minister to the poor. He does? Yes, he does. I didn't know that. Oh, yes, he does. You know what? This pope deserves a, a salute with my lucky shillelagh. What's he his name? He did when he was in Argentina, What's too. his name? Pope Francis? Pope Francis. I want to salute Pope Francis with my lucky shillelagh. You're one hell of a, a, a pope. You're no poop, pope. I'm serious. Hold on. Hold on. The levity bells. Where are you? You're no poop, pope, by no stretch of the imagination. I'm in rare form today. You know, this guy is as much criticism as he's getting from the mainstream media. He's becoming rapidly a very well-liked pope, even from non-Catholics. I see non-Catholics posting things about this pope. Yeah, but the funny saying thing that, is, saying that you know what, I like this guy. He's he, he he makes sense. Even like like some of the liberal atheists like him. But the funny thing is, Cudlow and these guys on CNBC, they are Catholics, and they're disagreeing with the pope. So CNBC. Must be corporatist. No kidding, boy! Bingo! When'd you learn that? So they are they are the uh, slightly Fox and CNBC, the right wing that goeth. Oh, I didn't know CNBC was a bona fide right wing uh, station. Are you out of your mind? They got two. I thought they just had Fox. Well, CNBC is business station. It's business. Oh, naturally it the Republic. It is the worship of capitalism on CNBC. Isn't aren't those okay. uh, tall skyscrapers uh, symbolic of the evils of greedy capitalism? When you think about it, like the tallest building, who's who's competing? It's like a big dick contest. Who's competing for the tallest obelisk? And uh, well, it, it represents it rep World Trade Center. It represents the greed of capitalism, or that that big pecker over in Dubai. Well, I don't know about that because the three, the three biggest countries who have the three biggest airlines in the yeah. world right are the emirates qatar and the some other one over there these little guys these well, little guys they're buying all the big body jets I don't know about, got more jets than american airlines and all of our airlines combined i don't know about little guys i know they're scumbags to work for my philippine friends who uh uh, went to Dubai to work because they pay triple the amount of yeah. pay that they get in the Philippines, which is pathetic to begin uh -huh. with. 
thanks to corporate America outsourcing office jobs there. No. They, they're abused in Dubai. The, the men are uh, uh, making them work without a break or a lunch, work straight through. And, um, Put your diaper on. And there have been rapes <gasps> by the uh, male uh, employers, uh, uh, you know, on the female immigrants working in the office. And uh, I intend to do a show, a worldwide show, going live about this very subject. And I was discussing with a mm. with a Chinese, a very intelligent Chinese businesswoman, and she says. The Chinese have been exploited even worse. They, she mentioned something about Cuban Chinese uh, wor working aboard some kind of a slave ship. <gasps> you know, exploited and they're getting ten dollars a month. Well, their own people. Ten you know, ten dollars a month in pay are being exploited over there. Yeah, this is all. It's human nature. Capitalism does that. Okay, it has these flaws. Child labor. Did didn't J P Morgan approve of child labor? Of course! A child labor was institutional once in this country. And how come I haven't heard 60 Minutes do a story on uh, uh, because the dirty deeds of capitalists? They have no rearview mirror. You okay? mean they, they don't learn from history? That's correct. And Anything they, that went in the past, hey, it's bye-bye now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but there's a, there's, a, there's a strong connection between capitalism of today and the, uh, the evils of the past. Well, of course, it's e it's an evil system. It's an exploitative system. It's a flawed system. It is a system that only benefits, as I keep saying, those who have the capital, the money. Right. It is a system that siphons moolah upwards. Well, um, did, did you come across the banner I posted about the fact that uh, Ronald Reagan contributed, he contributed towards the extension of Nelson Mandela's prison sentence. Yeah, because the Democrats. What do you do? Tell him to tell tell him to uh, instead of uh, 25 years, the, give him 27. The Democrats uh, were, of course, very anti-apartheid, and uh, they were protests. Many Americans were protesting, and they were going to get Mandela freed much sooner. Uh, yeah, well, but Reagan. Put a stop. Because the United States put a stop to it. Kissed ass with South uh, Africa at one time. We did business. You think with De Beers? Them. That's correct. De Beers Mining Company That's might have correct. paid off some Republicans. And Mandela was a terrorist. He was a he, he, you know he caused problems. Up until two thousand social. Up pet. until two thousand eight, he was on the uh, the the United States terrorist list. Probably. Yeah, he I think I read that. He was a terrorist. Well, <clears throat> but he was a freedom fighter. He's a freedom fighter, yeah. exactly. He, he was a great man. And you know, some uh, <clears throat> racist. Gandhi was a terrorist too. Gandhi was another great yeah. man. Did you know that uh, some uh, right wing teabagger uh, posted a comment under that and said uh, his uh, prison sentence should have been extended even more <laughs> than it was? Of course, the right wing. T Tea baggers are going to say that because they're course. racist. <clears throat> this show, speaking of Mel Nelson Mandela, a uh, moment of silence for the death of Mel Nelson Mandela, uh, one of the great uh, humanitarians or freedom fighters uh, for civil rights and uh, is o an overall important human being in, in the history of mankind. Uh, I dedicate this show to Nelson Mandela who passed away recently the other day so a moment of silence <clears throat> okay uh, now let us sink our teeth into these readings now uh, speaking of Ma Mandela GW Bush Clinton yeah and Obama are going to the funeral they all should. The, the the ones that that. I thought he would send Biden, but hey. You know, I guess. Nah, he nah, I guess he can go. It's good that he's going. Now, uh, these two readings here. Yeah. Are dealing with the past holiday, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, okay. But I do <clears throat> think that they are applicable. So I'm going to read them. 
the message of the reading is still applicable. Probably but still, yes. Because many, many readings are interconnected with other issues, other topics, often. Yeah. All right, proceed. I enjoyed the column. The column was concerning the five myths about the pilgrims, which we read last week. Yeah. By the way. However, the first Thanksgiving was in Texas. Really? In 1540. What did they eat? Enchiladas and, uh, and tostadas and uh, quesadillas? Conquistador Francisco Vazquez de Coronado y Lujan. Lovely. The conquistadors, they did a lot of good. Organized an expedition of more than 300 soldiers. Six Franciscan missionaries and a thousand Christian Indians to explore and exploit the region of Cibola. Yeah, exploit is the word. Where is what is the location of Cibola? I guess Texas. Deep in the heart of Texas. <clears throat> Coronado was seeking the fabled seven cities of gold in what is now New Mexico. Okay, so Is New that Mexico. where El Dorado was? No, it, that was El Dorado was supposed to be in Florida, no? No, that's oh, Ponce, no, that's hold, hold, hold on, hold on, wait this stupid thing. No, that was Ponce, Ponce de Leon's Fountain of Youth. The El Dorado, I think, might have been in South America. Could be. But but there's, an, there's another fabled city called Seven Cities of Gold. Seven Maybe, Cities of Gold in it, New Mexico. Was it? Uh, uh, Hopi Indian, uh, was Aztec, or... Well, I don't know. It didn't say that yet, if it does. It's always in sevens, you know, like the seven hills of Rome, and seven... Seven is a complete number in the Bible. It's lucky. It's a lucky number, eh? The Spaniards found several dusty pueblos, but no cities of gold. A scouting party reached the Rio Grande at modern Albuquerque. Albuquerque, that's a funny sounding city, Albuquerque. Yeah. Then explored north along the river into Pueblo country as far as Taos Pueblo. So the, the On the edge of the Great Plains. Coronado made his winter quarters along the Rio Grande, north of present-day Albuquerque, and raided the nearby pueblos for supplies. Soon the natives revolted against their unwelcome guests and faded into the mountains. By spring, the conquistadors were very low on food supplies. An Indian volunteer, the Spanish called the Turk. Here we go, the Indians uh, giving social programs to the uh, European settlers again. Led Welfare. the expedition out onto the Great Plains. Coronado and his men were the first Europeans to see American bison. Yeah. By the end of May, the explorers had killed enough game for a banquet. In late May, at Palo Duro Canyon, Texas, southwest of Amarillo, I'm sure with the help of the Indians, they learned how to hunt the bison. Franciscan Juan de Padillo offered a mass of thanksgiving. Then all present celebrated the abundance of food at the feast. And then they started killing off the Native Americans and giving them smallpox. That was the first recorded yeah. Thanksgiving in what is now the United States. Lovely. Thanksgiving with Franciscan friars making nice nice with the Indians before the, uh, the genocide. Although the exact date of the feast is not known, we do know from historic accounts that Spanish explorers and missionaries celebrated a Eucharist and Thanksgiving 
feast in the Texas Panhandle in May of 1541, about 80 years before the Pilgrims. Now, which Panhandle? The one by Texas. Uh, the one by El Paso on the side, or the one by Amarillo and Waco up north? Up north, the little one. By at where Amarillo is now. Mm -hmm. Okay, Midland, Texas, where my stepfather, I think lives when he was a child or a kid, whatever. Amarillo uh, by morning. Amarillo, the, the big Texan steakhouse is up there. If you can finish the 72 ounce steak, you get it for free. Not too many can, but anyway, uh, so a Eucharist, so they have, gee, they were very, uh, very religious, these That's conquistadors, correct. weren't they? Yes. You, you drive what I'm getting at, I'm being sarcastic. No I'm kidding. We know sarcasm on this program, I hope. The start the great deal, great, a great portion of this program is sarcasm. Yeah. The second reading concerning Thanksgiving. As I was seated at the Thanksgiving Day table with the family and friends, I thought how fortunate I was to be able to do so and not to worry about where my next meal was coming from or if I would have a roof over my head. Ah, uh, so this person is playing the old violin right now. Soapbox. Wait a minute. Okay. That's not what he's doing. He's saying how lucky he was. Oh. oh okay. I thought about the many people who weren't so lucky. About the millions of children who go hungry every day. Right and the families who struggle to simply survive. Right. And about James Brady, who did a, a, a homeless man, who did a very Christian thing, very unselfish thing, and was thrown off yeah, his we, welfare. I think... We'll check him out. Right? I think we had an article that we did not read last week. We will get to it. All right, all right. And Nelson Mandela, don't forget him. I think we did forget him. Okay. I thought about the Republican House members who were probably enjoying the same Thanksgiving as I, while not giving a thought to the fact that they cut food stamps to the poor or want to cut other benefits. And to veterans. Including unemployment insurance and Social Security. Well, they don't like unemployment insurance, Republicans? No, why would they? So what happens when you lose your job? Tough shit! Pull yourself up by the bootstraps, pal! And and, 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 and boil your boots. Or and as... Have uh, them for dinner, right? Hey! That, the expedition up to uh, uh, Canada, uh, I think under Aaron Burr, that's what they did. They cooked their, their leather goods. Their true goods. leather, baby! What about... And, and I think uh, <laughs> there were cases where people uh, killed and, and, and ate their, uh, their sled dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, that thing. They're Malamutes or whatever, Huskies. Did you know that, uh, 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 as a little aside here, the shoes in the old days were not right or left, they were just. You mean like moccasins? Like They were just shoes. There was, you not, could, there you was no right on, shoe, left shoe? Yeah, you could put that right, you know, the left, and, you know. So they were less comfortable? I don't know about that. Huh, interesting. Just saying they weren't right or left. I was thankful that over the years I was able to save for a comfortable retirement and know that many have not. No, it's not many have not. They can't! They're not given the opportunities. Who the hell can save or get a 401k on $7.25 an hour? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. A ne I mean, a retirement nest egg on minimum wage? Not being among those who are wealthy enough to have Dreams. large tax loopholes. I have always paid a fair share of taxes. But I'm happy to do so. Well. Since this country has given me the opportunities it has. I do not understand the truly wealthy who have reaped the most benefits and fight 
not to give back even a little. Only wanting to increase their wealth while begrudging any benefits to those in need. Well, considering I personally know somebody who went from being a well-off Republican to being a flat broke, quickly converted, a progressive liberal, uh, they, they should think about it this way. They're paying their fair share in taxes, they're paying more in taxes, but if they should lose everything and fall flat on their face, they should be confident in knowing that this system will take care of them and will not forget them. But they never think long term, do they? And they never think about a financial crisis which put maybe 22 million people out of work. The jobs are gone. The jobs that are gone ain't coming back. Nope. So they, they're, see, it's that, it's that, uh, that self-righteous attitude. I can get a job anywhere, anytime. On me. On me. My employers are looking for me. They want me. I yeah. am me. All, all, all uh, right wingers think that uh, the jobs are just sitting there waiting to be filled. Yeah. I applaud Pope Francis. Me too. Who has had the strength to tell us that in this regard, our priorities are wrong. All right. This is another reading, right? Same. Oh, okay. We must care more about each other and not demonize those who need help as people simply taking our money. They are our friends and neighbors and they are having hard times. Most are working but simply can't make enough. Uh, speaking of that, this uh, thought just came into my head. Mm. This uh, congressman in uh, Florida who just got uh, caught cocaining, he put up that damn law that he wants to have uh, people on food stamps and welfare drug tested before they can get their benefits. So if I think we should drug test Congress. Damn right. Because so they're they're smoking something. Baby. So if someone if someone has an addiction, then they're not entitled to. No, they're not. They're any not help. entitled to welfare or anything like that. Yes. Yes. That, mm. That's what or they they really want to cull the herd. Exactly. Well, you know, one the right wing has always had a problem. It even goes back to Wilhelm Reich for crying out loud. Yeah. They do not like social programs that help anybody. Now, I'm not talking about welfare. I'm talking about psychiatry. I'm talking about, uh, uh, like, uh, I believe Reich ha had this um, thing going where, you know, people who had problems, they would come in and they would get help. And wouldn't cost them a dime. Rehabilitation. Uh, they don't they do want, not believe in that. They don't want the poor to improve in any way. No, no, no. Because no. they want the poor to be dumbed down. And then they can complain. Well, when is somebody it? is dumbed down, the more they're dumbed down and the, and, the, and the more they're in poverty, the more desperate they become. And the more desperate they become, then they, they will be more willing to be slaves to the corporation, which is what... Uh, well, that's what the corporation wants, that's which, for sure. It works for nothing. they want, yeah. Yeah. Or they wouldn't be outsourcing. Oh, I mean, gee, I wonder, I wonder who's going to buy their products when all these millions of Americans... They think about the first quarter, the, the, you know, the quarter, slaves. three months, maybe. That's what they think about. They think these people that are working for slave wages are going to have any surplus cash to put we into the... We are long the, past to the time. Put, to put into the economy. Hmm? We are long past the time when corporations have any social consent. Okay. There's no long-term long thinking. Pass. There's no long-term thinking with them. There's no thinking about you know the economy, the people, etc. It's the 
It's the three months and how much can I make in that period? Well, you heard what I said about the bumbling uh, right-wing idiot, uh, Jason Bayer. Oh, yeah. You know, hey, I get a job, you cry. stop crying me a river. Don't cry me a river. There's jobs out there. Yeah. Right, right, right. Get a job, get a job, get a job. Again, it goes back to what I've said so many times. I'm not sure why is it so hard for us to get the mindset that uh, why should the person uh, jump out of bed in the morning, hit the streets, looking for a job, look for state uh, warehouse to help you find a job, look for bigapple.com uh, or whatever to get a job. Monster.com. Monster uh, Monster or whatever. Why aren't the corporations coming to the individuals? Like headhunters? For a job. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or even worse, Craigslist. Or, uh, oh. And the government job search website, which incidentally to both of them are chock full of jobs that don't uh, uh, exist. do not longer exist. Yeah. They are. No, I'm thinking in terms of like uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, they have, you've got a big workforce there. You've got decent people that want to work a hard day, get a good pay. Why aren't the corporations moving there? Yeah, why does no, that, why does they moved to South Carolina where they don't have to pay the people crap. That's what they do. And and they probably don't have to pay any state income taxes. Well, of course, they all. get the abatements for that crap. That's what Boeing does all the time up there in Seattle. Hey, if we don't get what we want, we're going to move. We're going to move this baby. Hey, don't doesn't owners of uh, professional sports teams threaten the city to move if they don't get their way? Exactly. They do then it all they the time. Make the, then they make the city or the state pay for the stadium instead of the private owner. Yeah, and, and they and they screw over the the consumer that buys the tickets Correct. and the hot dogs then and you the got beer. Five six dollars for a stinking hot dog and the popcorn and pretzels and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and they got people. Uh, a blood-sucking, greedy punks like uh, Robinson Cano and Curtis Granderson of the Yankees uh, uh, going with teams that will probably never see the playoffs because they will be t bathing in cash. Now, here's a little tidbit. You know Ty Cobb? Oh, yeah. Le legend. Hall of Famer. Right? Ty Cobb never went to a World Series. Oh, really? Or, or wait a minute, did he, did he go twice? Detroit to Tigers, Ty he Cobb. He was with the Tigers, yes. Yeah, but didn't he have the best all-time yes. batting, highest batting average? Yes, but you see, that was all, it never translated into, like I said, a World Series win or something of that no, nature. No, and he, they were just well, individual. And they were not well paid back then. Hell no! At all. Oh, God. I think, um... Certainly a lot like the CEOs of today. No oh, hell, they're not. They're not paid. They weren't paid, paid much at all. 400 times what an average worker makes in his you know. in his uh, factory. Well, or you're talking about the days when when professional athletes did it for the love of the game. Babe Ruth, I think his biggest salary was two hundred forty thousand dollars. Yeah, him and uh, Lou Gehrig, they didn't get that much. Now, now I'll grant you that two hundred forty thousand dollars in those days bought a lot. In the nineteen twenties. Yeah, but you know it ain't yeah. no. How much was uh, the big A getting? Thirty million. Well, you know? Cano is getting uh, signed a ten-year deal with the uh, yeah, Seattle Mariners for, for over yeah, two hundred million. Ah! For a ten-year deal. It's but, twenty million a year. But he hasn't been, he hasn't been in the baseball spotlight that long, doing great. He's only he's a, he's still a newcomer, you know. I mean, if you're like, let's say like sperm in a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like if you're like a one hit wonder. Like if you're like uh, like a younger Alex Rodriguez when he was with the Mariners. And he had consistently, year after year, he was a, 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 a an all star, a superstar. Mm -hmm. Then I can understand, but you know, if you're just yeah, you if you're a newcomer, you still can't understand those wages. Okay, that's that's inflation. It's simple inflation. Well, you know, you know, the consumer, the baseball fan, pays for it. Yes. In the end, I mean, it's inflation. It's un unrecognized inflation. 
<coughs> when you, prices go up, this is inflation. You mean when they go up, not because of necessarily because of overhead going up, they just go up because they feel like making it go up. That's right. That's, That's right. like uh, uh, going by somebody's perception or ideology because we feel like thinking this way or we feel like screwing you over. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and, and the people do it. See, this is. This is what really gets my goat, like That's my right. grandmother we used to say. It. We accept it. Americans don't boycott. Americans, hey, you saw what happened to Occupy Wall Street. It was totally defanged. Totally defanged. Well, now that, now because of these spies. Well, now they have, a, uh, they have a progressive populist mayor. Or maybe they'll make a comeback. Uh, watch this progressive... Uh, so-called liberal communist socialist mayor. You want to see because he's bringing back Bratton as police. Chief. Yeah, but don't forget. Remember one thing, Bratton, the the gentleman from Boston, right? Bratton bucked heads uh, early on with Rudy Giuliani, and you got to think about yeah, why why was he let go so quickly by Rudy Giuliani, who was a Republican. But Bratton's. I think he's the he's the actual founder of Stop and Frisk. You see. Well, you what see, what would happen in New York City? Believe me, if every single day white guys, kids, whatever, whatever their profiling technique is, were stopped and frisked every day. No, oh, they'll be up in arms about the outroar, outrage. Do they have? Do they have this much time on their hands? To no, stop, they don't. To stop, if you had a stop and frisk, everybody that looks suspicious in New York City, you'd be going through hundreds of thousands of people because they do. it's one freak after the next. They do. <laughs> they go through hundreds of thousands of people. Where, where did and they I believe the, the amount of crime they find is like 2%. Well, where do they find time to eat donuts and drink well, coffee? What about the cops and the... the, 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 the Whatever that are after prostitutes, that are after uh, 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 erotic book clubs, massage parlors. Oh, like that, that, like all that, this wasted like time. That's a real money. Cr like that's a real crime. Exactly. Give me, give me a it's break. It's all garbage. What time is it? All right, finish up. Then we'll go on break. And then we'll a New Jersey canine. Yeah, what happened to... Uh, that was crowned the world's ugliest dog in 2007. Yeah. And later became the topic of a children's book, Preaching Acceptance Has Died. I'm not familiar with this pooch. Elwood was only eight years old. His owner, Karen Quigley, says the Chinese Crested and Chihuahua mix died unexpectedly. What a weird combination. Thanksgiving morning, Quigley. A resident of the Sewell section of this Gloucester County town said Elwood had been dealing with some health issues, but appeared to be doing well. Elwood was dark colored and hairless, save for a puff of white fur resembling a mohawk on his head. He was often referred to as by his fans as Yoda. Mm -hmm. Or E.T. Lovely. For his resemblance to those famous science fiction characters. Mm -hmm. Elwood won his crown at the annual Ugly Dog Contest at the Sonoma Marin County Fair in California a year after he had finished second. Well, at least he, she, he made the um, English Bulldogs feel good that they didn't win, or Sharpays. <laughs> Quigley had rescued Elwood in 2005 when he was about nine months old. The breeder was going to euthanize him because she thought he was too ugly to sell. What? What? That's not right. That's not nice. After garnering the ugly dog title, Elwood became an online dog with the worldwide fan base. During his life, he appeared at more than 200 events that helped raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for animal rescue groups and non-profit animal organization. Good for Elwood. Inspired by her pet, Quigley wrote, Everyone Loves Elwood, a popular children's book. 
Well, they love Elwood more than she does. That promoted a message that it's okay to be different. Quigley said the book shared lessons of love, compassion, perseverance, and encouraged readers to be kind to animals. Yeah. He made people smile. He made them laugh and feel good. It was wonderful, Quigley said. He will truly be missed. Oh. Take a look at his picture. Let me see Elwood. Now, I've seen all kinds of dogs. Let me tell you what I think of Elwood. Wasn't that the name of one of the Blues Brothers, Elwood? Looks like he looks like a, looks like an extraterrestrial. <laughs> yeah, E.T. or Yoda. Look at the tongue, man. <laughs> yeah, that is a that is a strange looking pooch. <laughs> It's too small. To yeah, put, unfortunately, the picture is too it's small. It's too small for our viewers to. Oh, by the way, what happened to homeless James Brady? He's up next. And and Nelson Mandela. We need time for Mr. Brady. Okay, Mr. that's Mandela. why. That's why you talked about Elwood, the ugly dog, right? Here. I don't believe they had a connection. No, what I'm saying, you probably just wanted to get it out of the way because it was a short. That's correct. Okay. It is time for our break. It is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's Gastronomic Delight. Now it is lunch, followed by William H. Morrow III, and yes, he's calling and he has time to be with us. What happened with the... Uh, well, then. Uh, I don't... I don't know. I have no idea. He says his meeting with the lawyer went very well. Well, we're back, and we're waiting for... Yes, sir. William H. Moore the third, our official voiceover artist. Um, for those of you out there, being that it's technically flu season, okay. For those of you out there that are thinking, because of the uh, pharmaceutical industry propaganda and your medical doctor propaganda. If you're thinking about getting the flu shot, don't, because there have been so many reported complications, including deaths, with connected to the flu shot. Uh, a woman's uh, teenage son died uh, not too long ago through complications of the flu shot, mm. and uh, just multiply that many times over. But if you go to Walgreens or, or Walmart, you see the advertisement for you to get the flu shot. And how do they sucker people into getting the flu shot? Fear. They, fear. They scare the life out of them. Oh, if you don't get the flu shot, you might get a dangerous influenza and, and, and something might happen to you if you don't get it. And what you do is you end up getting the toxic shot. I mean, the, yeah, a vaccine. And it's just as bad as having, I don't know, sometimes it's just as bad as having the swine flu or the avian flu, which is the bird flu or God forbid, you know, it's like, uh, just don't fall for the big pharma propaganda. Nonsense. Of course, the drug companies are still pumping out their commercials. If you want to be happy and healthy, you got to take our drug. This is a drug for every problem imaginable. Now we know. And, uh, and then you hear, you read the side effects at the end. Good disclaimer. Gary Now has been doing, has, has done. He hired two lawyers once upon a time, to check uh -huh. up on the pharmaceutical industry, on how many times they got caught, how many uh, fines they had to pay, etc., etc., etc. Really? You mean fines? And it, it, it was, I believe, it was hundreds of thousands. And well, yet, all the fines and everything, punishments, they're garbage. Because they're write-offs, well, they're isn't, taxes. Isn't that a, just a slap on the wrist for Big Farmer is paying a fine? Yeah. I mean, I mean think about it. Vioxx, 60,000 people were killed. So they wow. took the damn thing off the, off, off, off the market. Wow, 60,000 people. But just the only th industry you can kill people and, and they get away with it. But just think of all the drugs that were approved by the FDA that ended up getting recalled and taken off the market. 
Well, Vioxx was. But but the FDA will go after uh, vitamin. They'll vitamins. Get, they'll go as I said again. The FDA will go after nutritional supplementation. They will go after doctors at, in a heartbeat with a SWAT team. Yeah. Vitamin doctors with a SWAT yeah, team. Right. But it takes sixty thousand people to die from Vioxx for the FDA to do something. And nobody goes to jail. And nobody goes to jail. Anyway. Same thing with the crooked banksters and Goldman Sachs and everything. Never see a jail cell. You see the unfairness in today's uh, American um, system in general. You know, it's, uh, it's like it, it's bizarro world. Mm -hmm. What's right is wrong. What's up is down. What's in is out. It doesn't make sense. Now, as we're waiting for William H. Moore the third, being he, he's usually too punctual, and he calls early. Now, oh, I believe he's late. Now, he's late. I wonder if everything's okay with your. Just for the hell of it. Right away. Let me. Oh, you got the phone up yeah, there. But but just for the hell of it, let me just. Watch him call. Yeah. No, just press the watch him call. It. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You need a handset. Yeah, you're right about that. You were schmuck. There's a deal tone. You were schmuck cookie. Yeah. Oh, it's working. Fine. So he's late. Everything's fine. So the little bugger's late. He's a bugger. I asked him. Yeah. Are you calling? He said yes. Are you have time to call? He said yes. Are you going to be on the show this week? He said yes. See, when I question somebody, I like to cover all the what ifs. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so I hear them, you know, yeah, I'm available. Yeah, I'm definitely going to call. So when they come at you with, yeah, yeah, but this happened and that happened, you know, I forgot. It doesn't hold any water. Only Jimmy Lagori does stuff like that. <laughs> You know, he'll make promises and then he'll do a no-show and he'll always have some feeble excuse for not showing. You know, some people are that way, you know, if, uh, but not Billy. No, B Billy's old school. He's solid. Uh, um, but uh, there are people who, you know, uh, they'll make plans, but it's not written in stone. If something better comes along, they'll mm. ditch you. They'll do a no show, no call, which is extremely rude and ill-mannered. But uh, the man is a tad bit late. But anyway, um, I hope the I, microphone ain't picking up my chewing. Uh. Well, people already know you're having lunch. You just happen to chew like like a like a like a like a cow chewing his cud. Oh, a cow chews like this. Yeah. Well, that's pretty quiet. Yeah. Maybe a horse is uh, is an animal that chews with its <laughs> mouth. Well, they chew with their mouth open, don't they? Yeah, get the hard one. You ever see a camel? Oh, we a bird. Yeah. You ever see a camel chew? Its jaw goes sideways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. its bottom jaw goes to the left and its top goes to the right and then it switches it goes sideways and diagonally and funny looking animals and they have like buck teeth sticking out I believe llamas and alpacas alpacas are in the camel family which are the which is the South American Indian chucho donkey they're pack animals one has short hair and the other one has long hair well, William, you did say you were going to call. But anyway, I will continue to banter uh, until he calls. If he doesn't call, we will res resume with the uh, readings. If he, he does a no-show, no-call, I will take back what I said, and I will make a statement which, means, uh, which will mean uh, no human being is 100% uh, behind their word or trustworthy unless they prove it you know but anyway um, 
Uh, it just amazes me how many people in America are so quick to blame the poor, use the poor as a scapegoat, uh, Reverend Bill. They never ever mention the corporation, mm -hmm. you know. Even many of these libertarian uh, groups that seem to... Well, libertarians are one of your worst. They're almost right wing. You well, saw Ron Paul yeah, in the debates. But do you notice libertarians tend to like uh, conspiracy theory pages, which is really sad because many conspiracy theory pages uh, present Accurate. very, very shocking but truthful information. Mm -hmm. And to have a right winger like a libertarian who is like a closet conservative, so to speak, right yeah. there. Ron Paul in the debates, when the, the primary debates for the Republicans, yeah. when asked about, you know, health insurance, so well, what are you going to do with a, a, a person who doesn't have the health insurance? I mean, he should die. Well, even John. You don't let him die? When John and the crowd, the crowd applauded. Applauded. They actually made that statement? Yes. And the crowd applauded. They would want people without health insurance to die. Oh, really? You know, I wonder if that's on YouTube. Maybe you pull it that's up. Pretty, that's pretty uh, heavy-duty evidence mm -hmm. against libertarians. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. And then they wonder why. And then if we have martial law and a, and a, and a, and a civil uprising, whatever, and then they're, they're going to wonder why people are out there committing crimes and looting and, and, and you know, in um, forming militias and all that stuff. But um, that's pretty bad. But there's just a lack of compassion. But it doesn't surprise me, you know, if you read 2 Timothy in the book of Revelations. I'm sorry, 2 Timothy in the Bible. 2 Timothy, it tells you how people will become in the end times. Um... Yeah, you know, like, um, sometimes, well, sometimes, my mother has a tendency uh, to end up watching the Hollywood gossip shows, you know, mm. entertainment tonight. On e? And it is so nauseatingly boring, I'm convinced that it is for small-minded people. It's it's gossip. What's the old saying there? Uh, 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 large minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, Well, and small minds discuss people. Yeah, on those shows, it's like the viewer is living vicariously the life of the celebrity. And and the people that, that report it, they, um, they behave like like they get so excited about what the celebrities are doing in their private life. What they're wearing. Who they're dating, who they're not dating anymore, mm -hmm. who's getting a divorce, who's a, who's separated, who's this, who's that. Who the hell cares? I could care less what they do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I can care less what they do. That's the only thing to do I, with your life. The only thing, hey, look, the guy that got killed in the, in the car crash, uh, the actor, um, what's his last name, Walker? Walker. Paul. Paul Walker, was it? Uh, I think he it was, was 40 years old, huh? Yeah. He, uh, Fast and Furious. Yeah, I remember the uh, the movie he was in with uh, very cute Jessica Alba, uh, where they they're diving for for sunken treasure. Mm. Uh, but he uh, he dies very similar to James Dean, right? In a sports car on 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 a, on a scenic California highway. Yeah, well, James Dean's car didn't catch fire, did it? Yeah, I don't know, man. That was a shame, though. He was alive. In, in the car after it crashed and uh... And he was a passenger by the way. The, the driver died too, right? Yeah, but uh, Paul was a passenger. And now, he, I don't know he, what the hell they were doing, but he, obviously they were yeah. speeding. He was very humanitarian. He, he yes, helped he out... Was. He helped out a lot of he people. He helped out a lot of people. The, the Philippines, uh, the victims of the uh, typhoon uh, in the Philippines recently. He, the guy uh, was very uh, compassionate. Uh, I gotta give him credit. I mean, he didn't just uh, 
talk the talk, he walked the walk. Mm. You know, and something like that is well worth mentioning about Hollywood. Uh, or, um, or I like to hear that um, actor, um, um, what's it, Nicholas Cage gets out of the red with the IRS, with the government. That I would like to hear. Ooh. Because he trusted his, uh, I guess, his financial planner to ah. handle his affairs. When it comes to money, I hate to say it, I hate to say it, but you trust no one. You have to learn how to manage your own funds. You have to be aware. It, it could be a business owner, you know, a bar owner. It could be any anybody. You have to be smart enough to learn how to manage your own funds. My Other, funds are low. Otherwise, you'll be ripped off. Okay. Uh, um, you'll be you totally will be robbed or somebody In like bed. like embezzlement or like Nicholas Cage's financial planner took a little for himself. He uh, he he hid money from yeah. the uh, IRS. Oh. I wonder if he did that on his own. I'm sure he did because I hear Nicholas Cage is a very nice man. Like. Uh, He'll take a picture with just about any fan at the spur of the moment, and he will not charge them, which is, in my book, old school. Mm -hmm. Old school. You know? But um, that's good. Because it's, it's so despicable with new athletes, young younger generation athletes and stars and celebrities that insist sure, on... Sure, give me five bucks, I'll sign your hat. Yeah, they have different rates, you know, they have, uh, you want to buy an 8x10 signed by me, it's this amount. You want to take a picture with me and have it signed, it's it's a much higher amount, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's sort of like having a form of contempt for your fans. It's like you're not appreciating your fans that spend money to go see you, you know. Now... A cat is a pain in the ass. That's uh, Steve. A cat is a royal... Oh, you know his voice? A so. cat... I mean, they could be great animals, don't get me wrong, but they are pushy, nagging pains in the asses. Come on. They are really pain in the asses. Well, Billy, you stiffed us. I hope nothing happened to the guy. Yeah, that's a possibility. I hope nothing happened. Maybe by asking him, are you sure you're gonna call? Maybe I, I put the kibosh, the kaiba, the the malaka, uh, the evil eye, the malaka, the yeah, the malaka. While you're up. Yeah. Oh, while I'm up, make myself useful. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's just commence. Commencing with the readings. Are we giving him enough time? Yeah. 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 He's about. Seven minutes or so. No, no, what am I saying? He's about 13 minutes late. Ooh, baby. She's not like him. Nope. 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 Not like him at all. But if he, if he calls, we'll... Uh, now, it might be a good idea to start reading the article that we left off with last week, week about homeless uh, James Brady. Yeah. To, just to get that over with, in chronological... More than $9,000 has been raised for James Brady, the homeless man in Hackensack, who found the $850 and gave it to the police, uh, waited six months and nobody claimed it, police gave it to him, and he lost all of his welfare benefits and etc. Medicaid, yeah. because he didn't report it as income but he gave it to the police as as um in lost and found correct he it was it was in the possession of the hackensack police for department. six months they hold it for that long huh? yes they do donations were still received were being received this week said tom toronto President of Bergen County's United Way, which started the fund on November the 9th. 
None of the money has been spent yet. Though as the United Way works with county officials to determine what Brady needs and how to help him without further loss of benefits. We're making sure he doesn't have any unmet needs. And he doesn't yet, said Toronto. The biggest concern is the cessation of benefits around his health care. So just because he had the cash in his hand momentarily, they consider that, oops, it's income, that's it. <laughs> this gift of God. Well, it's a gift if it if it stays with him permanently. Yeah. Now, my way of looking at the definition of income is not what you would get in one month. It's something that you continue to receive. You see. Yeah, income. It, in other words. Income should never, uh, um, uh, uh, momentary, uh, um, sudden income should never be multiplied by other months. It should never, it, well, it's it a shouldn't one, be called income. It's a one shot Correct. deal. You have to have, define it as something else. Thus, you do not lose your benefits. Like earned income would be an ongoing, I wonder, uh, uh flow. I wonder, I, I, I'm not sure what it is today, 13000 or something, it used to be 10000 you could give to somebody as a gift. But doesn't James, didn't James Brady still fall beneath the uh, federal poverty uh Well, of course, line? why do you think he's getting So benefits? why did that caseworker do that? Douchebag. Because it was income. Unreported income. That's correct, he didn't report it. He, of course he did, he, he, he reported to the police is lost in f to snap or to medicaid or whatever so the snap so, County social so, services so social services would have looked at it even though the police had possession of the money they would have looked at it as james brady's income once it went into james brady's hands just an excuse it became income just an excuse to kick the homeless Correct. to kick the homeless man off the dole that's all it really is. That's correct. Saving the county or federal government, whoever, you know, deploys the program, money. Even Isn't though, that what it's all about? Even though he was a good Samaritan. Well, morals has nothing to do with these things, especially when it comes to money. But he did not, if he wanted to, he could have not been honest. And he, he could have put it in his pocket and never told because nobody. Because cash, there's no paper trail. Unless you deposit it in the bank, yeah. it's like uh, the tips of a go-go dancer. They is cash. Anybody's tips. Anybody could be a waiter. It's cash. Meanwhile, yeah. city officials are moving ahead with plans to close the welfare office, whose director publicly raised concerns about the number of homeless moving into Hackensack weeks before denying Brady's benefits. Gee, I wonder why there's so many extra homeless. Oh, this is, this is a hard question to answer. Because they're lazy bumps. Not because the economy and the job market's getting worse? Actually, it has improved. Who said? Unemployment rate is now 7%. Who says it's improving? The government? The, uh, the, uh, what the hell do they call it every month? They put out the uh, the unemployment rate. It's yeah, down from uh, seven point two to seven percent. Aren't companies just uh, so nitpicky that they're hiring experienced people with education and with training? No entry level. Are they still continuing to hire that way? I have no idea what they're hiring. Well, that's what happens. Because, as I said at the beginning of the program, and I continue to say. The jobs that are gone yeah. ain't coming back. Right. So they ain't hiring I, nobody I, for those jobs. But I just want you to know that uh, U.S. employers uh, specifically want, they do not want entry level. Uh, Why not? People. That's what they want in the foreign countries. 
they want experience and the, the certificate diploma they want too much well then they want those things and they want low pay so how does so where is the incentive to go to a, a, an American tech school and um, go there through workforce or student loan or whatever or pay cash and give them ten fifteen thousand dollars when when you when you graduate um, nobody would hire entry level so one person told me well you gotta go to the tech school that will allow internship to go towards your grade so you have some experience oh internship you know what that means free. that means free slave labor well which was another talk show that we did constant flow of the incentive slavery is survival the incentive to do what to get the job it's survival well, I told you it shouldn't I, have to be that way I've this, mentioned this it how many, well I've mentioned it how many times on his program the system is flawed when where did we get this idea that the corporation has our very survival no they don't Yes, they do. They we need the job no. to survive. Oh, I, I know what you mean now. Well, I'm glad you do because Jeepers Creepers have been screaming about it for how many weeks? We, we're... Hold on. Americans are way too dependent on a corporation for their survival. On the private sector. And when they get a job through the private sector, the wonderful private sector, they, they're not receiving a, a living wage. So... I don't see any positive things coming out of any of this. Ah. Ah. Mr. Brady lost Medicaid and cash assistance through the end of the year because he did not notify the Hackensack Human Services Department of the $850 that he found on the street and which police gave back six months after no one claimed it. Brady was praised for his good deed. He even got a commendation from the city council. Well, I'm sure he can thank that. Human Services revoked Brady's benefits through December the 31st. Saying he broke the rules by failing to report the money as income. Brady's plight was widely publicized, and department director Agatha Toomey That's the douchebag caseworker. had a copy of a record article about him in a file. But no one notified Brady that he had to report the money. The department's oh. actions came as the city council was considering whether to close the office, shift welfare services to the county to save an estimated $400,000 a year. Toomey defended what she did at a council meeting. The money if the money was returned back to Mr. Brady after six months, then I would say it's income. But Why is it income? Because it's money coming in. It's a one-time thing. But they got even the IRS considers it income. That doesn't mean it's right. They they look at uh, gambling winnings as income. That's correct, but that doesn't say it's right. Now, taxing unemployment is not fair. That's that, correct. That's that's a no-no. That's, that's correct, but it is a yes, yes, isn't it? And uh, it's like uh, uh, oh. The problem uh, is, look. Let's look at these things. Uh, 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 can't hear you. Man. These things were made by law, and they can be changed. True. Why that, that which is? Just like that filibuster law that the Senate passed. Changed it. Because Changed they, they got tired of the Republicans pulling their stunts. Correct. The, the Republican Congress. Correct. 
Well, the, the, the what do you call it? Senate. Decided to do it to Senate, okay. Yeah. Filibuster rules are not in the House. They're not? Per se. I don't know what they do in the House. So now it's just majority vote in the Senate. You get the most votes, you get your way. You don't get but the most votes, you don't get your way. It's and if you get 50-50, Mr. But Biden steps in. The VP. And gives you the one vote. Yeah, the Vice President is allowed to break all ties. Correct. Because he is technically the, the he is above the Speaker of the Senate Majority. He is one step above Senate Majority Leader. Whom I don't even know because the media is constantly letting you know who the, 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 the Congressional Majority Leader is because they're getting all the FaceTime the Republicans. I don't even know who the Democrat... Harry Reid! You hardly hear... Nevada! You hardly hear about Harry Reid. Mitch McConnell! El Turtle Face He's, yeah. is the minority leader yeah. in the Senate. And turtles, Kentucky. and turtles are usually cute, but not this turtle. Mitch McConnell, man. Well, you have a funny way of looking at things and you think a turtle is cute. Now, Boner is the, um, isn't he the, he's the, um, speaker Daily of the House. Daily Coast says he got caught lying the other day. Mr. Boehner. Doesn't surprise me. Anybody with Rise all the punk. anybody with uh, anybody that, that's that dramatic uh, and, and, and plays a big violin and cries at the drop of a hat, you know, that's, they're, they're hiding something. Yeah, they're hiding feelings, which they don't have, because as I say, I believe they are deficient in oxytocin. See, anything you hear from Republicans and Fox News. It's like a diversion, Dr. Bill. They, they don't want you to see what the left hand doesn't want you to know what the right hand is doing. You know what I mean? They want you to listen to their, their hot air and their lies, but in reality, the evil banksters, bank, the banks of the New World Order, you know, that are pulling the strings, the puppet strings, um, they are doing very well. Very well in their quest for Thank world. You. For world. They want to keep it that way. In their quest for world domination, they're doing very well. Okay. Yeah. And they want to keep it that way. That's why CNBC just loves capitalism. So you have CNBC and Fox News, corporate whores, uh, Republican Congress, corporate whores again. Constantly repeating the same lies over and over and over, and the stupid, 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 numbskull, imbecilic Americans—about 25 percent, especially the ones. I'm always blaming the ones out west and down south. No, no, I blame the ones here in the northeast also. Like, oh, there are a lot of them. Well, look, they voted for, they reelected Chris Christie yeah. in New Jersey. Well, a lot of Democrats did, too. Holy shit. Yes, right. Sellout. A blue dog sellout Democrats. Voted for Christie. The man that did nothing positive for, for the masses. And robbed the poor and the elderly of their homestead rebates. And gave a lot of welfare to the, his rich buddies. Tax cuts. No, the no, just, and just, the wealthy. just flat out give them a fortune. That, too. Give them money. What do you think's going on with Sandy? Where do you think these contractors are coming from? Huh? Pri pu uh, uh, public bidding? Remember, oh, I can do that job. Remember, I remember with the rebuilding of uh, the Jersey Shore Seaside Heights, you remember yeah. that he was so concerned about rebuilding the businesses on the Jersey Shore? Yeah. Yeah. But nothing was done to help the people that lost their homes on the Jersey Shore. Yeah, it's still going on. And now he's saying no to green alternative energy in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Now he's saying no to it. Hey, these are the people. This is what you reelected. What is wrong with you people? What is wrong? What are, are, are is is myself, the Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman, uh, Gary No, Jesse Ventura, um, Ralph Nader, Lionel. Uh, Comments as you see. Are we the only ones who could see through 
or the, 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 the fog of, of uh, misinformation? No, there's a lot, as I just said, only 25% of the American people, electorate, whatever you want to do, uh, like that Republican crap. Um, okay, uh, the 75% of us understand what's going on. Oh, I forgot to mention the great Bernie Sanders. Yay! Are we the only ones that can see the truth and are intelligent? and are independent free thinkers. It's just that these other 25% have too much power and control. Yeah. Just like in the House of Representatives. The minority has all the control. You gotta speak higher because of your furnace. Anyway, uh, no sign of William. Uh, I will not let William Morrow forget this. Uh, I don't believe me. Old James takes care of business. You can tell I'm mad. Yeah, I'm mad. All right, continue. Americans have been eating worse than in previous years. Yes. According to a newly released poll of more than 150,000 adults mm -hmm. every day, gallop. And the health improvement company, Healthway, asked hundreds of Americans whether they ate healthfully the day before. Healthful eating usually rises and falls month by month, with Americans eating a little worse in spring, better in the late summer, and much worse around November and December. But every month this year, Americans reported they were eating worse than during the same months in 2012. For instance, 63.4% of Americans surveyed this September said they were eating healthfully compared with 67.6% .6 in September of last year. Pollsters pointed out that the January boost in healthful eating wasn't as big as usual, and that eating well also took an unusually sharp dive in May and June. All in all, for most of this year, healthful eating has been at its lowest point since 2008. It's exactly what I would have expected, said Valerie Roulas director of the Community Diabetes Initiative of the University of Southern California and Children's Hospital, Los Angeles. Pollsters did not speculate on why the American diet might be worsening, but Roulaz suggested that persistent poverty after the recession could be pushing Americans to eat badly. Well, yeah, because garbage food is cheaper than eating healthy food. Myself and uh, my good friend uh, and famous personal trainer, uh, Mario Petrus, uh, we, we were talking about that the other night. <coughs> People simply, it simply cost a fortune to eat healthy, especially organic food. But, you know, the only thing they can afford is poison. Census Bureau data have shown poverty levels stagnating between 2011 and 2012. One of the things that's really hard to compete with, as far as healthy food, are the dollar menus at fast food restaurants. Oh, real great food, that is. So-called mystery meat hamburgers with processed um, cheese whiz or something. That's real food. White bread in, in, the, in the bun. It's affordable she said. It's affordable, yeah. In addition, produce sold in impoverished communities is often of poor quality, making it less appealing to strapped consumers. Gallup and Healthways also ask Americans about eating their fruits and vegetables. Fewer Americans said they were regularly eating at least five servings of fruits and vegetables compared with last year. You know, really, a real nutritious um, uh, organic apple is not shiny and pretty looking. 
No. It's, it's all beat up looking, so don't don't knock the beat up looking produce. Uh -huh. If you don't like it, just cut the blemishes off, and and you know, and you don't want a glossy waxed perfect uh, bell pepper or whatever you know or, or apple you don't want it is because it, it might be GMO it, it might have the pesticides sealed into the apple skin with the wax mm. you don't want that uh, yes toxic crap and fast food and, and uh, cheap food in the supermarket is the cheapest food to buy and uh, when it comes to the poor they just want to feel full that's their objective feeling full that's why those people with Aaron Burr ate their show shoes they wanted to be full yeah yes yeah it's sad but you know meanwhile uh, Republicans uh, like Chris Christie was worth 17 million dollars a year <gasps> You know, people like him, right wingers like him, obviously never miss a meal. But it's okay to close food pantries for Republicans like, like Chris Christie. That's okay. Christianity has often been used over the centuries to prop up the powerful. Yeah, and control the masses. But from the beginning, the Christian message has been subversive of political systems. That's good. God is not political. Judgmental toward those at the top. Yes, well, they're, they're, they're more sinful than the people on the bottom. And demanding of all who take it seriously. Pay your taxes and shut up, elitists. Pope Francis has surprised the world because he embraces the Christian calling to destabilize and to challenge. As the first leader of the Catholic Church from the Southern Hemisphere, he is especially mindful of the ways in which unregulated capitalism has failed the poor and left them waiting. Mm, he's, he's Argentinian? His apolos, apostolic exhortation, the joy of the gospel, is drawing wide and deserved attention for its denunciation of trickle-down. All right. I like, I like this guy, this Pope Francis. I salute him again. As a system that expresses a crude and naive trust in the goodness of those wielding economic power. It's a view that has never been confirmed by the fact and has created a globalization of indifference. Will conservatives among American Catholics who have long championed tax cutting for the wealthy acknowledge the moral conundrum that Francis has put before them? Hmm. But American liberals and conservatives alike might be discomfited by the Pope's criticism of the individualism of our postmodern and globalized era. Since each side defends its own favorite forms mm -hmm. of individualism, Francis mourns a vacuum left by secularist rationalism not a phrase that will sit well with all on the left. And in light of the obsessive shopping on Cyber Monday and Black Friday, here is a Pope who paints consumerism in the darkest of hues. That's right. We are thrilled if the market offers us something new to purchase, he writes. In the meantime, all those lives stunted for lack of opportunity seem a mere spectacle. They fail to move us. Yet, this critic of our age refuses to be gloomy, scolding, querulous, 
and disillusioned pessimists, whom he labels sour pusses. I like a pope who takes a stand against sour pusses. Sour pusses putting it mildly. They're just greedy, miserable bastards. Francis makes many liberals swoon without, in a conventional sense, being a liberal. He has also split American conservatives between those trying to hold fast to him and those who know that he is, from their perspective, up to something dangerous. You know it would be great if Pope Francis... Like those on CNBC. Mm -hmm. You know it would be great if Pope Francis uh, did away with mandatory celibacy for, for priests. That would be a smart thing for him to do. Well, you know, I mean, give me a break. Eh? You just started. What are you trying to do? You put, put uh, lipstick on a pig, uh, bandages on a, a, a broken system, on the devil's church? Come no, on. I think Pope Francis uh, can be more than that. I think he can be the professional cosmetologist for the Catholic Church. But it's just another cult. Yes, it's true. But if he's a, if he's a good What ape, it should do is dissolve. It, it, you're asking for too Period. much. Period. You're asking for too much. Well, I, I I think I think some of the the ignorant, outdated customs should be changed, like forcing celibacy on a priest. You know, um, but to to dissolve the whole kit and caboodle. That, if it's wrong, it's wrong. That's asking too much of. Uh, it's unbiblical. It's drastic. It's we, wrong. We know it's unbiblical. Well. Why should we suffer these institutions which are wrong you know what they and should? which hurt us, etc., to survive, you, even giving them tax exempts? You know, Pope Francis should, um, if he really wanted to be 100%. There he is, and pours his ass. Hello? Hello? Huh. I guess it wasn't. Ringing. I guess it wasn't Bill. My old lover used to ring me once to say she loved me. Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. Was it? She used to do that. Oh, I wanted her. That was Tony Orlando and Don, huh. right? <laughs> yeah. Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. <laughs> Where were we? A uh, Pope Francis. Yeah, I want the Catholic Church to it, give up some of its bad stuff. Listen. I'm going to have to emphasize with the shillelagh. If he wanted to be a really nice guy, 100% nice guy and truthful, he would just simply eliminate all the laws of the church and just go by the Holy Bible 100% lock, stock, and barrel. That's all. And, and forced celibacy is not mandatory. Jesus never said that pastors, clergy people, uh, uh, the apostles, neither did Paul, should be, neither did Paul, have to be celibate. All the laws of man from the Catholic Church, eliminate them and go by the laws that really count the Bible. That's all. It's that simple. It's not rocket science. And it would be a different church then. It would be <clears throat> the Church of God. I think that would be refreshing. <clears throat> All sides realize yeah. where the energy of Francis pontificate lies. Not three times. Hold on. Yeah, go ahead. Continue. He's not the first pope to denounce our unjust economic system. Pope John Paul II regularly decried imperialistic monopoly and luxurious egoism. Pope Benedict, Benedict the Sixteenth condemned corruption and illegality. Okay, so what and happened? The conduct of the economic and political class in the rich countries. So you would think, with all the millions of Catholics in the world, that they would have learned from these popes and didn't vote conservative at all. Well, gee, you would have thought maybe like Antonin Scalia, Clarence Thomas, uh, Paul Ryan, uh, Kudlow, and the other Catholics. 
people would have learned something. So giving the true message, that's proof that it's not getting through. So it's possible that it's not uh, biblically prophesized. Hold on. It's not, well, bib it's not biblically, biblically prophesized to, uh, for the world to be better? The, the world is not going to be better. Why would you want to make the devil's world better? No, I want to make it better for all the good people. That's the devil's world. How are you going to make it better? Well, because good people still have to eat and have shelter and, and, and over their head and clothes on their back. Well, that's not making it better. That's just improving, you know, situations and stuff like that. Basics, yeah. But you're not going to make the world better. You're not going to find peace until yeah. Jesus comes. Yeah. That's the Bible. You know, or, and, and also uh, uh, um, give a pardon to all student loans, being that the job market sucks. There should not have been the loans in the first place. Education I, I was once and should have still been free. Education, a good education and good health care should always be rights and not a privilege. And when I told that that moron, uh, Jason Bayer, he didn't have any comeback. He didn't have any comeback. Do the Republicans have a plan to replace Obamacare? No. Do they have a plan for jobs? Oh, by the way, speaking of uh, Obamacare and, 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 uh, and an alternative to Obamacare, which Republicans don't have. Rick Santorum had something stupid to say in the media. Oh, only one thing? Well, he's, this, this is, let me just tell you what he said. Rick Santorum says that, being that Nelson Mandela passed away recently, he decided to be cute and use the word apartheid. He says he is, he is uh, against the apartheid of, of this forced Obamacare and he is on a crusade to stop Obamacare this forced apartheid. Now what the hell does Nelson Mandela's uh, um, um, uh, nothing to do with it. What do you call um, uh, crusade uh, uh, purpose have to do nothing. with health care for all Americans. Every day the Republicans get talking points. And everybody on Fox News has to incorporate those talking points into their sentences so that they say but Bill, every day. So many people are happy with their new Obamacare yes, health are. insurance. Yes, they are. And, and they, they are happy that they can keep their kids on their policy yeah. until age 26. So what They're the, also what? happy with uh, free uh, 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 examinations for colonoscopies and mammograms, which I don't agree with, of course. Thermography. Thermography but, is the way to go. Thermography. But they're they're free. So what does what does Santorum want? Excuse me. <coughs> they want the old days back. What does Santorum want? They want the days when uh, an insurance company can can deny your claim and can deny you because of pre-existing illnesses. What or that 30 or 40 million people when they get sick go to the to the, to the, to the, to the emergency room and it costs us. That's what they want back. Oh, so so he wants to go back to not having any compassion for the poor and having people that denied so they could die. Uh, 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 gee, this is a real born again evangelical Christian, is Rick Santorum, isn't he? In name only. Don't people see through this phoniness? This, this I don't know. I mean, you are defending the Roman Catholic Church, and you want it to continue. No, I'm defending Pope Francis. Because I like what he's been saying. But you want to defend the church. You want to you want to screw around with a couple of rules here, and a couple of rules there. Well, it's a start. It's a start. But it's never going to read Revelation 17. It ain't never going to become Christian, true Christian. I will prophecy. Come on, man. The apartheid of Obamacare. I've heard nothing, when it comes to the facts, I've heard nothing but positive things about Obamacare. I haven't heard anything. Oh, good. they got caught the other day. Ah, oh, that's what Boehner did. Boehner got some chicorini or something up there, uh, dissing uh, uh, Obamacare. That it did this, that, and the other thing to her. She turned out to be a liar! 
A liar! Propaganda! So he was caught. And how come we didn't hear about it on the, in the mainstream media? Uh, no, like I said, uh, I read it at the Daily Post. K-O-S. Daily Post. It's amazing how the corporate horrors of mainstream media never report things like this. That's headline news. John Boehner caught lying. A woman told a fake testimony that she hates Obama. Fake. They didn't, they didn't say anything about that. The local newspaper didn't say anything about that, did they? No. I read it at the Daily Coast. Sorry. You know, I couldn't find... Um, I couldn't find an email address connected with the local newspaper telling them how they are avoiding the real, reporting the real truth. And the internet is blowing them away when it comes to news, newsworthiness. Uh, editors, editor at North Jersey something dot com. They have an email. A di the difference is that a concern for the poor and a condemnation of economic injustice are at the very heart of Francis's mission. In this system, capitalism, which tends to devour everything which stands in the way of increased profits, whatever is fragile, like the environment, is defenseless before the interests of a deified market, which become the only rule. Can you imagine an American liberal who would dare say such things? Conservative American Catholics have been quick to point out that toward the end of the joy of the gospel, Francis strongly affirms the church's opposition to abortion. <coughs> this is indeed one of the ways in which he is not a conventional liberal. He speaks of unborn children as the most defenseless and innocent among us. They're not children. See how they switch. They're subject. not children. I'm See boys. how they he switched the subject? What the hell does abortion have to do with the poor, the defenseless, and the flaws of capitalism? It's not a person. Nothing. Just the same thing what you said yeah. about apartheid with Santorum. The they have nothing to do with each other. The embryo that breathes like a fish, the fertilized egg, the fetus are not persons. They're not people. Until they breathe the first breath of life. Well, corporations are. No, they should be. They should be classified as demons, not people. Well, they are persons. Demonhood. You heard, Mister Romney. Corporations are people, a, my friend. A person is something, an entity that uh, is entitled to rights. And well, and, that's why they are persons because they got all the rights. And uh, compassion, and they don't. Qualified. And free speech. Money. Money. Free speech. They can give it to any politician they want. That's, that's any why, amount. That's why you only hear people that are uh, bought, bought out by uh, corporations in, in, in debates. And if you don't hear it by any independents. Pope Francis insists that the church's position is not ideological obscurantist and conservative, but rather is linked to the defense of each and every other human right. Yet almost immediately he adds that it's also true that we have done little to adequately accompany women in very difficult situations, and quickly moves back to his broader stand on behalf of other weak and defenseless beings who are frequently at the mercy of economic interests or indiscriminate exploitation. It's true that liberals who love Francis 
need to come to terms with aspects of his thought that may be less congenial to their assumptions. But the high priority he has placed on battling economic exploitation, his warnings against those who remain intransigently faithful to a particular Catholic style from the past, and his unhappiness with the rise of ultra-orthodoxy. He upbraids dour judges bent on rooting out every threat and deviation, test conservatives even more. In light of a recent past in which conservatism was gaining the upper hand in the American Catholic Church, progressives have reason to be elated. Conservative Catholics know this. That's why they are torn between expressing loyalty to a pope who has captured the popular imagination and fretting over whether he is transforming the church with a speed that few thought was possible. It's good to transform something that's uh, not accurate, that, that's... Uh <clears throat> Not according to conservatives. Spewing lies. Well, uh, do conservatives want to live their whole life in, in a delusional uh, fantasy world? Obviously they do, because uh, they continue to do it. Of selfish lies. And they defend it arrogantly. Yeah. Okay, uh, being that the man passed away recently, please read the Nelson Mandela reading. I didn't say I had a Nelson Mandela reading. Oh, I'm reading. sorry, I thought you said you had one. I said that all the networks, all the cable TV shows, all the news programs yeah. have done tributes to Nelson Mandela in the last couple of days. So there was nothing in the local newspaper about Nelson Mandela? There was nothing new to say. Well, that were progressive discussions. We're supposed to offer something. Why? On a, uh, a, uh, an item that is very current. Did I not just say that it's all over everything cable news internet they're still they're, they're still uh, discussing him on the internet that's what I just said so why do we need to discuss them here well why do we need to talk about we the, need to discuss things here well, that are not discussed yeah like on all like the news a cat stations. that looks like ET exactly that's not what progressive discussions is about Trivi yes, it trivial trivial things like that that's not trivial. I'm sorry, I doubt. Why is that trivial? I disagree. We're supposed to be a hard-hitting, shocking, revolutionary type of and show. Why, then why is it so uh, something you can't understand to defend somebody that's ugly? I don't, I don't understand. It, exactly. It, it's an animal. I, I, I mean, English bulldogs You are, just came here before and you said that turtle's faces are nice and look. Yeah, because I... Well, he called this dog ugly. Because I don't look at an animal, a creature that is different looking. You I don't are not I don't look at it as ugly. They're 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 cute in their ugliness, like an English bulldog. There is more or Sharpe. in the world than just Republicans and Democrats. That is interesting, is not trivial well, and etc. We are uh, progressive discussions is representing the five taboos of American life Correct involved with newsletter censored. Whatever. Talking about something like, uh, let's say, the bees dying by the millions, uh -huh. in my opinion, is like very important. Why? Talking about uh, an, an, old, an, old, an old lady that had a, a, has a grievance with the town because of an ordinance, to me, that's not worthy of progressive discussions. Why not? It's an it's, it's it's, it's encumbrance on freedom. You're not seeing the big pictures well, and things. I don't know. It's just I, you don't know. We 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 gotta look. The internet is posting a lot of a lot of information that's very what? very hard hitting, uh, exposing uh, uh, leaders uh, with their. You see uh, what I mean? You're their, fixated on only that political ramification. Ex, that's it. Ex, There's more than exposing that. Exposing the crooks. Exposing pe uh, leaders. Politicians that are paid off by the fat cats. Who are the fat cats? They're paying them, paying them off. Uh, the New World Order. 
uh, 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 so on, et cetera, et cetera, the, the, the central bank. So in other words, the internet has all of that stuff and people can go there and look at that stuff and, and get all the information. Yeah, but we're, we're progressive and, discussions. And, and, we're and, supposed and to what are they going to get here? We're supposed to discuss The same it. shit? Well, it's better, it's better than trivial things. No, it isn't. You're not... A, look. I don't get it. The world is... I just don't get it. The world is balanced. Correct? You want something hot, tired of politics, bad, liberal, Republican said, you know what you need on the other side? What? You need something trivial. Well, why you do we... You gotta bring that, down the blood pressure. Why do we call it progressive discussions? Well, why can't progr progressive doesn't cover something like that? An ugly dog? Progressive is like the the opposition of uh, conservatism, of corporatism. No, it isn't. Progressive means to move forward. Improve. To go ahead. To improve. To improve. Etc. That's not going to do with politics. I know, I don't get it. I'm sorry. Anyway, well, see that I mean? Because I, I just don't get it. it. I just don't get it. I, 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 There's I, more in the world than liberals. Than I Republicans. believe in in shocking the public and and giving them something that blows away everything else in the universe. And talking well, about the internet ain't doing talking that. about little Miss Muffet's cat or or her uh, <laughs> her ugly duckling dog is just. It's just what is the most popular? It's just beneath me. I'm sorry. What's the most popular stuff on YouTube? Stupid things. Cat videos. Well, that's cat videos. I know they're ridiculous. Uh, what? See what I'm saying? But why do we why, have? Why, why do we have to join triviality? That, we don't. Why do we have to? Like your but friend that, Esmeralda talks about silly things, right? But you. But the, you just said you are. You are. Yeah. You are. At, 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 in one sense, you're trying to get. A popular bunch of people to watch a show, but you're not offering them what they want. I don't want to conform to morons. See what I'm saying? They're idiots. They're more. They need to educate their minds. Then you have to only accept the one or two that are going to be there to watch the show. I understand your your logic about if you can't beat them, join them. That's but then why them. are we calling it progressive discussions if we're kowtowing to idiots on the on the internet? You're not kowtowing to them, you're bringing them on board. By mixing it up? You're Merv Griffin. You're uh, 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 Johnny Carson. You got an audience that comes to watch you because they know what you're going to do and they know what you're going to say. Well, in but our, in that audience, yeah. maybe a few, that if you actually bring out, uh, who was the billions and billions and billions? Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan. You bring out Carl Sagan, and he gets into some depthful stuff and stuff like that. I some like that. people in our audience are going to take that away. The majority is not. The majority. But are, this are, stuff are bumbling, and the, the bumbling newsletter boobs. censored is not directed at the majority. Never was and never will be. Well, you're right about that. Well. So there you go. But why do we have to get trivial, though? I still don't get that. Well, see. you're the one who made the decision that the ugly dog was trivial. I didn't. I found it very enlightening. So well, if the, you make these decisions well, that something is trivial... Discriminating against the way uh, a pooch looks uh -huh. is, may have a, there may be a connection between discriminating against uh, a certain group of human beings. That's correct. And what if, what if, what if? We don't know for sure. But what if that attitude and what he did to, uh, you know, gain that title or whatever, what if that hurt him emotionally or something and led to his early death? Ah, uh, dogs I don't, don't have know. dogs don't have that kind of feeling, emotion. How do you know that? Plants uh, do. Plants. Didn't you ever hear of the experiment where they they this this guy went into a room where there were plants and this guy was a very abrasive and etc and when he spoke the plants were afraid of him how did he and know they that? did not react properly how does the plant react to, to to voice it doesn't grow properly it doesn't do what it's supposed to do uh, and once this giant it happened with watch my god too um, when Gary Knoll was doing his experiments with the rats really uh, I believe there was one guy or something that the rats didn't respond to, and 
you know, there was the rabbi and there was the other woman and everything, and they healed their rats and, 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 and you know, the rats were taken care of. Them. But this one guy, the rats didn't respond to. Is that why when I, when I pet and stroke my fuzzy uh, uh, rainforest air plants, they tend to grow better? See? And, See? and when I, uh, when I, when I, 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 they detect I ran my fingers through the uh, shamrocks, uh, they, they started growing? They detect your energy. Energy, yeah. Your aura, etc. Okay. A lot of this stuff going on, you can't just say something is trivial. Okay. You never know how it's going yeah. to affect somebody else. Now, I'll, I'll just accept the fact that you don't, you do not have any specific Nelson Mandela readings. Wow. I, I just want to say that uh, the man uh, was uh, pretty important, like like a Dr. Martin Luther King, and uh, yes, we've and, and he uh, he was very well respected by the United States, and, and he did uh, a great thing. And the, <coughs> and the Aborigines, uh, Aboriginal uh, um, civil rights organization down in, in Australia, they paid tribute to him, but the Australian government was the, were the only ones to refuse to put their flags at half staff. Uh, they did. The, yeah. Why? Uh, Sean Harris told me uh, the, 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 he said the, we have a racist government there, and they refused to put their flags at half staff. I thought they should have. What the hell does Australia have to do with South Africa? They're having racism problems uh, based on on color, based on the Aborigines. Aborigines yeah. are dark, very dark, and they're having and, they, and they've always had uh, abuse of of racism. Well, and, I uh, thought uh, Australia was a very tolerant country. No, they uh, it's very similar to what they did to Native Americans in the United States. They they want to they want to privatize and sell off their sacred land. And, yeah, well, I know that. You know, and uh, that's progress. You see, progress is not always, or progressive is not always, uh, 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 um, good. Well, I said to the Can gentleman, I said to Sean, I says, Australia. All right, we know European colonization. Is about stealing things by force. Resources. For resource, this uh, extortion force, and um, throughout the world. But since Australia is a continent, a continent usually contains countries. What would be so terrible as to you know, the Australian government taking the sacred ground of the Aborigines and and making it a republic? like an Indian reservation in the United States. Let them govern their own country. Not going to happen because <clears throat> the big boys want that land. Yes, they do. Okay? Yes, they so do. So behind that one thing of that land, I can assure you, is some capitalistic dream or something of that nature. Oh, oh like, uh, like, for instance, uh, uh, T. Boom Pickens or the uh, CEO of Nestle's wanting to control the world's drinking water supply. They're greedy. They're filthy rich, and they they want power. They want control. Henry They're Kissinger. Than us. <laughs> Henry Kissinger once said, um, "If you could control the oil companies, you control the world. If you can control, if you can control the food supply, hold on, it's fucking thing." If you can control the food supply, you, you control the people. That's what Henry Kissinger once said. Isn't that what we do when we cut food stamps? Yeah, you make people more impoverished and more desperate. Thank you. Then you'll have them slave labor uh, going on in all those privatized prisons. Pretty soon, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me just quickly bang out a little promo since William is like AOL not to be found, I guess. If you're wondering, people, how can you join and be a part of our organization, which is Newsletter Censored and Megalife 21? Well, this is it. Simply go to newslettercensored.com and uh, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, founded by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman. Get Newsletter Censored now. You need Newsletter Censored. And this is the information that you're not going to hear anywhere in the mainstream media or read in the mainstream press. The original stuff. Baby. The original stuff. And there's a brand new issue, hot off the pancake wheel, so get it 
now. Yeah, it's in the mail now. Get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. There's nothing, and I mean nothing, like newsletter censor. So get it. Um, and I, I want to also thank the multitudes of new members that have been joining the Progressive Discussions um, Facebook group. They're, um, they're coming out of the woodwork and I want to salute all of you in appreciation for coming aboard our Progressive Liberal Starship, Progressive Discussions. And the I, <coughs> I cannot get to Texas Hold'em Polka on Facebook. I'm talking about progressive discussions, and, and Dr. Bill was talking about Texas Hold'em. This is important to me. Oh, for God's sake. Yeah, like the people are posting all these cat photos. Oh, oh how cute. Look how adorable. Come on. You, 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 the, your country and the world is going to hell in a handbasket, man. You're, t you're, you're talking about games, and, and other people are talking about their video games. Texas Holman, this game, that game, didn't uh, the, uh, cute kittens, this, uh, come on. You, didn't the Italians have the Colosseum to keep the people Yeah, because the people were bored. Yeah. Then they became sadistic over time. Yeah. Well, not over time, they were sadistic back then anyway. What the hell do you call walking down a road and seeing people crucified? Ain't that sadistic? Yes. Well then, that's what happened in those days. The, deterioration of humanity like it's happening today. Hey, humanity was deteriorated back in Noah's day. That's why God killed them all. Yeah, that's so, true. You know, it's not something new. Yeah, he, he, he admitted he was sorry he created man that's back in, uh, in Genesis. Bible. It. He admitted it. But why all these evangelicals post things like God loves you so much and he wants to wants the best for you and he wants to hang with you and he wants to solve your everyday problems. He wants to become your personal sir, savior and save you. Save but, you from what? But 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 he admitted that the human race was a was a bad choice to create them. Well he had to make other plans for the human race. I mean all those people are not dead and gone. They will all be resurrected. Oh I said a dirty word resurrected instead of just going to heaven as these Christians that they call themselves believe. You don't want to mention the immortal soul, do you? You know what I mean? They, they believe. believe. Well, that's what they believe in. An immortal soul which goes to heaven if you're a good person and goes to hell if you're a bad person. That's it, baby. Okay. But uh, then what about the resurrections? What the hell do we need to be resurrected for if we have an immortal soul? So facto ergo, there's no, there's no connection logically. That's correct. If you, if you, if you're going to be resurrected into a perfect uh, godlike being, then why do you Only need? Some are going to be that way. But then, if if you're going to be the first resurrections, you know, will be to humanity again, so yeah. that you can live your life over and do it right this time. Why do you think everybody's going to get the second chance? Because God says that. And why do you think they need a, a second chance? Why do you think they need a second chance? Well, what about the people that know as they were killed in a goddamn flood? Don't you think they need a second chance? Uh, they're rotten to the core. Then? Ken, Ken Create says, no, 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 the wicked don't deserve a second chance. I'm sorry. Throw them in a lake of fire, he I'm says. I'm sorry, but the wicked get the Holy Spirit when they are resurrected. And then, how can you call them but wicked? How, how, how do you... How do you um, have restitution for the evil deeds that they did? Some people without will punishment. Not. Hmm? I'm sure that Mr. Hitler will not repent. It's called repentance. Well, if you're killed, it did. It's a fancy way of. Uh, it's like a. And you take the dirt. Uneducated way. way of saying if you died, you uh, uh, and you're evil when you die. Correct. There's a good chance that when you're resurrected, you're not going to be such a nice guy. If you already... You are giving the... You will be uh, given your hundred years to repent. And if you don't... To live a life without the devil. Without the oh, devil you mean when, bothering you. When he's in prison Correct. for a thousand years. For a thousand years. You won't have him to deal with. 
you will only have the one avenue of information, which is yeah. God's. Now, now, when is he supposed to come back as an angry, roaring lion? After the thousand years? When he's released? Uh, I believe he's going to be an angry, roaring lion when he comes back here. Soon. Oh, you mean for the tribulation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank he, you for... He shall rule in the, in, in the millennium with a rod of iron, my friend. So that means there's going to be some people around that will need a little coercion to yeah, become well, good. He's not coming back like the Hollywood you know? version of Jesus. All mild and meek. And, and gentle and soft-spoken. He's going to come back uh, like a pretty macho Jesus. If you want to know what he looks like now, he's gonna be what pissed. he's going to look like then, I believe it's Revelation 3. Go there and read it. He's going to come back as he is. As he is. As he is. And he ain't looking like those stupid hang-up pictures you got on your wall. You mean the emaciated man with the long hair and the long beard? Correct. With his ribs sticking out? Correct. Hanging on a cross. No, that's not how he be. That's, correct. that's not how he really looks. And, and and angels don't look like cute, dimply, chubby cheek, curly headed uh, Pooty. uh Yeah, pooties, uh cupids. Yeah, they don't look like that. They're gigantic, fiery, uh powerful beings. Just read the Bible, you know. Six wings. Yeah, a lot like gargoyles, a lot of them look. You know, I well, mean, it certainly looks like gargoyles, and the the, the, the beasts around God's throne, etc. Yeah, they, they all look like gargoyles. Yeah, they look more. This is, you know, this kind of harkens back to. They look to, more. To Elwood. They look more like this. Can they see it? Yeah. They look more like this. Bring it down. Than they do uh, a, a a a cute curly haired baby with wings, or or an adult with curly hair. You ever notice that the artists uh, that painted for the Vatican made all of the angels look uh, like Cauca like light Caucasian Europeans? Like, like, like the artist makes the deities look in their own image. They do it in their own image. Well, I believe they're following Dante. Yeah, Dante's and in I'm front of I'm not sure if Dante, you know, described them, you know, the, the demons and etc. If you go, if you go to a, they go by? if you go to like a black Baptist church, they have a picture, a painting of Jesus being black. dark, being black. It was dark. It, 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 when I was in Venezuela, all the Virgin Mary statues had brown skin. They looked like uh, like Hispanic women. So everybody imagines God, and you know, there is a church to look like them. In Europe, I believe it is, which has a black Madonna. Yeah, they say that uh, some some insist that Jesus was an Ethiopian or that was Mary was Ethiopian, huh? He was a Jew. He was a Jew. Now he might have fled, uh, or Mary might have fled with the baby Jesus to Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. I know Egypt. she 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 skipped out of town at one point. Two years to go to Egypt because Herod wanted to kill him. Yeah, Herod was so paranoid about because he anything. Cut, it, Jesus was a king. He was born to be a king. He shall take over the devil's throne. You see how here on the earth. You see how selfish human beings can be, uh, greedy and. Uh, you said the you said the modern day. Well, they want to protect their power. That's for sure. You said David's throne is right now technically in London, England. It's in. I don't think it's in London. I believe it's in Scotland. Oh really? I believe that uh, particular throne and stone are in Scotland. It's the big uh, what do you call it? palace, whatever it is over there. But oh. yes, it's with the British people. Because they are. It's with Ephraim. Ephraim and the United Joseph's States. Joseph's son, Ephraim it, and Manasseh. Manasseh is the United States. Correct. Okay. And they're both under the same, the original curse. There's no original curse. The original was blessings. Right. But the lost tribe. Now they are cursed. Now they're cursed. After the blessings. That's why the decline of the United States and Britain, etc. Because now their blessings came to, came to the fore in like the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And both countries, you know, whoo, wow, we became the richest countries on earth. 
Well, now they're getting cursed. Yeah, God but, had to give them those blessings in the first place because he promised them to Abraham. Great Britain. Unconditionally. Great Britain lost its empire. The United States lost its luster quite a bit as, a, wor a, as a world economy, oh, yes, economic it leader. Decline now. Uh, yeah. And all for one stinking reason. And it has nothing to do with abortion. And it has nothing to do with all this other crap. All oh, you mean like stuff what, from the conservative right? You mean like what Pat Robertson says all the time? It has to do with one thing and one thing only. What's that? They have the wrong God. Pure and simple. Yeah, the, the idolatry. Well, we're talking about money. That's what the Bible says. Yep. Okay. So, so the golden calf of today is just simply the monetary system, the greed. Well, what's the saying? Huh? God is their money, and the bank is their church. Then they got the wrong God. Got the wrong God. Yeah, and that's why they they're. And being... that's the why the curses. Okay. 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 Thank you for joining us for progressive discussions. We'll see you next time. Say so long. As... And maybe next time we will not have anything to do with an ugly dog. Okay. Maybe an ugly duckling. <laughs> oh, uh, this week will be the debut. This Thursday will be the debut of How to Defeat a Conservative uh, on um, through the Pirate Radio Network, followed by uh, Newsletter Censored on Fridays. Okay. East, one? East, East, no, all of them. Oh, all all of them that you have done when you started uh, How to Defeat a Conservative <laughs> all right. are on the uh, a playlist for Thursday. And Progressive Discussions... Uh, internet radio version is uh, currently uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Mega Life 21 Live is Mondays and uh, of course tomorrow is the God Project and right now is uh, Holistic Health Talk and uh, each show has a different theme song don't, don't forget to put that stuff up on what's on your mind first thing on the posts yep. on the Facebook page and don't forget to listen to on the Facebook groups, The Christmas Lie by William J. Eisenman, Doctor of Divinity. So long. So long.